Welcome back to the Joy of Vinyl. I'm Rick Coast. Today we are going to look at the stylus on your turntable and some of the different types that are out there. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. Let's take a look. What if I told you the type of stylus you use didn't matter? What if I followed it up with, they all produce the same sound? That the terms spherical and elliptical don't really mean anything and that you shouldn't care. Yeah, I know, that's crazy talk. Of course they mean something. And of course you should care. After all, your turntable's stylus is arguably the most essential part of your listening experience. Those grooves aren't there for nothing. So before we get into the types of styli, yeah, the plural of stylus sounds weird to me too. Styli. Anyway, let's take a few moments to look at the anatomy of the cartridge that sits at the end of your turntable's tone arm. From the cartridge extends a thin tube called a cantilever. At the tip of the cantilever, the part which comes into contact with the record is the stylus, or needle. At the other end of the cantilever, hidden from view inside the cartridge, is a magnet. Also within the cartridge are coils. The stylus itself is tipped with a very tiny diamond. In most cases, the diamond is glued to the stylus. In others, the entire stylus is a diamond glued to the cantilever, in which case it's called a nude diamond. I don't know why. Real-world examples of these are the Ortofon Red, which is diamond-tipped, and the Ortofon Blue, which is a nude diamond. When the stylus travels within the grooves of a record, it vibrates. These vibrations are sent back along the cantilever to the magnet. The magnet vibrates and creates a small voltage in the coils. And this voltage signal is sent back to the preamp. It's kind of like magic. I don't know how someone figured all of this out at some point in the distant past, but for one, I'm grateful for it. So back to the needle. There are two basic shapes when it comes to your stylus. There's spherical, which is also called conical, and elliptical. So what's the difference and why do we care? Let's start with the spherical or conical stylus. Now, as the name implies, the conical stylus is rounded at the tip instead of coming to a point. Its rounded shape gives it a, a larger radius. And as a result, it won't trace as deep into the grooves. Think of the groove as a valley, now at the bottom of which collects dust and imperfections. The conical stylus avoids this, which means less hiss and less pops, but it also misses out on some of the information embedded deeper in the groove, such as some of the higher frequency representations of the music. And it's worth mentioning, there is quite a bit of debate, and isn't there always, as to whether or not this produces more wear on the record. The jury is still out on that, and, and it really has been for decades. I don't expect we'll have a final decision on that anytime soon. Spherical styli also happens to be the most common and the less expensive to make. So that leads us to the elliptical stylus. Because of its tapered shape, the elliptical stylus will contact more of the groove, diving deeper into the valley. It's less forgiving, though, when it comes to imperfections but it will result in a deeper and richer sound. Elliptical styli also tend to require replacement more often. Now, I told a little lie earlier. I said there were two basic shapes, but I'd like to quickly mention a couple more. There's also the hyperelliptical. If the elliptical shape is more tapered than the conicals, the hyperelliptical is even more so. Its sharper design tracks deeper and comes into contact with more of the groove than its less hyper counterpart. There's also the micro ridge. Now this is the most expensive of the stylus shapes. This computer designed stylus is manufactured to provide the best performance when tracking a groove. And I still love the fact that every stylus is tipped with the hardest substance on earth. It's kind of cool. 